Hello, folks. Good morning or good evening. Hey, Ron. Hi, Deep. Good evening. Yeah, let's wait a, a few more minutes. Hello, Ron. Hey, good morning, Deep. Hi, everyone. Hey, Deep. Um, I got to drop out at like in about ten minutes. Um, got a conflict, but uh, I'll catch up with you on on how. Well, I'll watch the video. It's recorded. Sure. Yeah. I think we have to just uh, figure out, and this is the first one meeting, so we have to figure out uh, how uh, best we can make progress. And the uh, interesting fact is that uh, I think uh, it's already listed to what all we have to explore, and I actually added a few things uh, yesterday. And we have to see that uh, if we go little by little. One question, though, uh, we would like to create uh, uh, this in the calendar because it's not there yet. And I think Ricardo had said something, but I did not follow up. So what what we can do for that? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, well, that's Ricardo. They they have control over the the calendar. The I think the TOC. Um, so uh, we need to send request to somebody, or I think so. I think so. Yeah, we'll. Just, I I would just ask Ricardo again. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he'll he'll be there Monday, by the way. Okay. 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 You we'll tell him in person. Give me a <laughs> Yes. 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 What event are you talking about? Oh, uh, Monday's uh, Global Encryption Day. Okay. Here, I'll put it. In, I'll put it in the chat. Check it I out. I think uh, it is in San Francisco. I think uh, the it's a Global Encryption Day. So. Ron is organizing is, uh, it is in San Francisco, but I assume uh, rest of the world things are happening as well, right, Ron? Yeah, they've been, things have been going on for a month. There's over a hundred uh, events around the world, but our, ours is on Monday. And it's the official day too, uh, on Monday. Hmm. Yeah. So let's begin uh, because uh, I assume Adele, I think Adele is not there, right? Uh, no. Nah. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, uh, he said he will be there, so we'll be waiting. But maybe he will join in due course of time. Okay, guys. So uh, this is our first uh, cloud native AI security white paper, and uh, you know, uh, you might have gone to the issue. Let me check. Okay, so I think you pressed it. Good. Yeah. So if you go to this issue, which actually in the chat, I think I'm sure all of you have gone there, and you notice there that there is a template, right? And uh, so that template is very rudimentary because Adele and other folks had uh, put there and we have to expand on it. And if you ask me, uh, I would like to proceed uh, in a way that uh, first we have to figure out, uh, and there are example actually. So there is already a cloud native uh, AI white paper and then you also have cloud native security white paper. So if you have gone through both, if, if you have not actually, you should be going, these are referenced in the template document. So this is a template document. I think if you are not aware, let me just paste in the chat. And this is linked to the issue. So this is the, there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah. So if you if you go there, you will notice that a uh, 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 bunch of stuffs are uh, mentioned and you have to correlate. And I had some agenda. I think if you go to the doc document in the bottom, um, should I share, Ron, or uh, should I share the screen, or actually everyone can open the document? Yeah, I, I think sharing is probably a good idea. Uh, I I would, but I gotta drop in a few minutes. Okay, good. So let me just share. Okay, so you see that this is the document uh, I was talking about. This is the, our uh, template document. So it does mention a few things what need to be done uh, on a very you know uh, simple level, and it's not complete. Uh, we, this is the job of the this team to actually uh, mention. Uh, you know what? I let's let's do one thing. Let's go uh, around the table and uh, introduce actually and what exp I mean what sort of field you are working in, so that uh, we know basically how we can split the job. How about this? So can we begin? Let me start with myself. Uh, so I work for Cisco. I'm working in uh, data center security from last, let's say, 10 years. And my job is not 
specific to certain things. It's end to end, mostly applications which are running either the local uh, data center are actually trying to bring a data from data uh, center and crunching the number are actually this, these applications are running in cloud and available to many vendors just to see what's going on in a data center. And these kind of product applications deployed by big corporations like big data center, it could be a big, let's say telephone service provider. It could be a university, simple data center. It could be an enterprise, it could be a factory, anything. So it's like my job is basically interfacing customers and developers both in terms of bringing new security technologies, mostly uh, basically uh, prevention of uh, uh, secu various security threat. It could be related to client, server, storage, uh, cryptography, uh, transportation, uh, workload, Kubernetes, Linux and so on and so forth. So that's my background. And uh, uh, the expertise, I most of the expertise other than uh, the concept I bring is that I have, you could say almost a decade exposure of a variety of deployment, variety of companies, particularly data center, but mostly data center applications, both in on-prem and cloud. So that's where I uh, come from. Now, next we can go maybe Let's go by here. What I see, uh, Ron. Uh, all right. <clears throat> uh, sorry. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Ron. Um, yeah, just uh, maybe pertinent to this this paper. Uh, I'm a I'm a consultant by by day, and I participate in various uh, professional societies by night. And um, you know, regarding security, uh, taught classes on cryptography and re you know all the related things and security in general. Um, also do POCs on, you know, different kinds of uh, use of authentication, authorization, things like this. And of course, uh, as we just mentioned on Monday, we're putting on a local edition of the Global Encryption Day uh, event. So I wouldn't claim to be a security expert by, by any stretch, uh, but more of a generalist. And it's just part of that puzzle, right? Kind of like what Deep was saying, you know, when you deal with end-to-end -end things, you got to deal with security. And so that, you know, I do it to the, to the level that I can. And then if, uh, if I need uh, assistance, I, I go get it. So that's, uh, for me, I think here, I, you know, it's what I would like to contribute is, um, maybe not so much being the expert, but maybe on the editorial part, making sure we didn't miss anything, make sure that the, the story reads cohesively, um, add things if I can. And, um, uh, that's kind of how I would uh, like to approach it and help anyone who who needs help, even if you're just trying to like uh, decide what to, to write, you know, you can bounce it off me like a, a soundboard and we can help uh, clear it up. And that's, that's me. And thanks, Deep. Thank you, Ron. Yeah, Nimisha. Hey, hi, Deep. Thanks for starting this meeting. Uh, so actually, I'm not a security expert. I don't have any uh, specific background in security, but I am a platform engineer at a company where we manage uh, basically thousands of Kubernetes clusters. Um, and uh, I think we are at least used to enforcing that security. So I guess I have a bit of experience there. Um, yeah, and I don't have any specific uh, areas that I would like to contribute to, but I'm happy to jump into anything and like, do my research on it uh, and continue. Awesome, Nimisa. Thank you for joining. Sadhanshu. Yeah, uh, I think as Nimisha said, I'm no, I'm, as well as no expert in the security field, but I do bring uh, my experiences from working from a backend engineering and as well as now as we are exploring the AI field to uh, run LLMs and models on the bare metals. So we are also exploring uh, like security part of that aspect in our company as well. So um, so as in meantime, I write, uh, do a POC and write about this stuff around the AI and as well as uh, exploring what we can do in the AI uh, security expert. I think that's that's uh, one aspect which is very well overlooked as of now. So yeah, uh, if there is anything that you need my help in, uh, in case of writing, soundboarding, as Ronald said, uh, you can pretty much ping me on that. I will be happy to review and basically uh, help you out in the storylining or maybe uh, if you need me to research on something, I'm very well good in doing Googling and searching if there is anything. Yeah. Awesome. 
Thank you very much. I'm hearing. Um, yeah, um, thank you Deep, for arranging this and nice meeting everybody. Uh, I'm Meryn Kiani. I work as a research scientist at a US-based startup where we are working to build a uh, platform for uh, you know deploying uh, AI and applications you know in a more secure way. Um, so um, you know looking at uh, you know some of the uh, uh, work that's done in this talk, um, I, I think the closest uh, that my expertise or experience lies in is in the uh, security of machine learning models. So I've worked as a uh, as a founding researcher in at Protect AI where. We built a, a a scanner for machine learning models. Uh, so as you know, most uh, of the ML models, you know, are now being democratized and you know becoming increasingly becoming part of a supply chain. Uh, so I think uh, securing models would be uh, the closest to I think where I can contribute uh, more. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Cameron. Uh. I'm I'm Cameron McDougall, and I am uh, apparently as of last week heading up the progress on the other white paper on scheduling. Uh, so I will be starting that in a couple of weeks when people have more time. But uh, I'm an MLOps engineer. Um, it, right now I'm in a technical marketing role, so more on the presentation side and writing some white papers that that work and stuff like that. So here. Uh, I can I can offer some editing expertise, or if there's anything that has to do with, um... <laughs> yes, you are Cameron. Ron says, <laughs> no worries. Uh, see you later, Ron. Um, so yeah, I I can do some editing if there's any expertise that I can offer. Uh, then I'm I'm more than happy to. So, um, what else was I gonna say? I think that's it. I'll stop talking. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, Karan. Hi, Deep. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I, I've been part of these meetings and uh, I've been mostly working in the MLOps space. And uh, currently, uh, we are trying to uh, build up a ranking engine around the Kubernetes. So we have also open sourced a part of it, which is called Kubernetes Recommendation Service. Uh, you can see it. Uh, you can find it on GitHub. And uh, we are trying to contribute more to it, how we can rank and how we can... Uh, uh, identify different tools and technologies. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Sunil. Oh, hi. Good morning. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Sunil Ravi Padi. Um, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Yota Secure. We, uh, we're a platform for AI vulnerability management. So we use AI, so definitely I'm very interested to see how I can help in um, uh, working on this paper. Awesome. Thank you very much. Sure, Neil. Yep. Did I miss anybody? Did I think everybody's covered. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I think... Uh, so Ron, one thing, uh, uh, we need to create this uh, document where we can take our uh, notes, discussion, and this will also include mostly technical discussion. So I did not, did not want to pollute uh, the existing, uh, uh, what we call CI group meeting, uh, uh, what we call, let me see, this document basically, which we use for our, uh, no, the basically main AI work group meeting, uh, this one, if you see here. So this is basically, um, I don't Pollute this technical discussion. So as of now, I'm taking this note in our template document linked to 177. Uh, but uh, we might create uh, one. I mean, we keep the template for our technical uh, capturing what's what's being discussed. What, what people could put their uh, ideas, their uh, you know research data. But when when it comes to discussion, I think it's a good idea to create the new document as opposed to going by this general meeting. Do you guys? Uh, think good idea or you believe that this is enough because this might uh, i think that's a good idea uh yeah. Awesome. and yeah and ron i think left he yeah, i think he, he might have he might have yeah. yeah 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 so uh okay good so okay so let's do one thing uh do, do you guys in, anyone have to say or actually uh, i just can proceed what i was thinking yeah you can uh, okay. from 
Okay, so to begin with, I would say that uh, uh, if you have already not done so, uh, you should be reading two documents uh, just to, you know, familiarize yourself. One is this CNCF chloridinetic white paper. So this is going to give you the idea that when they are talking about cloud native and AI, what exactly they are talking about. See, AI uh, means, uh, you know, a lot of things actually. And if you are running AI on a, let's say, a model on a, let's say, supercomputer or a bunch of uh, Linux machine, while some of the principle of security particularly will apply there as well, whether it is cloud native, any machine, any environment. Uh, but this particular paper which we are developing is particularly about the cloud native. So because if we do not uh, focus on cloud native, then we are going everywhere. So I would say that just to understand that what exactly it meant in, in terms of cloud native context, you should be going through this document. It's not a big document, it looks big, but kind of written in a very you know readable format. So I would say this one. And uh, anyone who has not familiarized about the model and the layering, and this is what we'll discuss a bit today as well, uh, we should be able to, you should be able to basically uh, uh, just familiarize your, yourself. I mean, during the uh, your uh, college days, you might have you know read uh, seven layer of, let's say, uh, networking, right? So, even though in the real world, we hardly care about what is the difference between fifth and sixth, basically session and representation. We don't think in that uh, uh, context uh, daily basis, but that just gives the idea. And particularly when we are thinking about security, when you are able to compartmentalize the stuff, basically start thinking in terms of layering, suddenly you uh, realize that uh, uh, what, what could be the problem over there. So that's a very good idea, actually. So this is, of course, this is a standard uh, picture uh, everywhere you'll notice in the uh, CNI world. But uh, I would say let's go ahead. And I do see that this model, while it does serve purpose here for security, we have to think a little bit differently. And we either need, we need to uh, make it uh, what we call uh, compliant to security paradigm, or actually we can create our own uh, you know stack, security stack. So just go through this small document. And I would also say that uh, the other one, so let's go to the paper here. So you will notice that uh, this is the cloud native security white paper. So if you go here, so you should be reading this one as well. This is the security one. I think this is a pretty good in the sense that uh, it, it is comprehensive and it, it has some concept as well. Wow. Okay, here. So if you go to, right. So this is the paper. If you, if you go paper, so interesting part is that uh, this paper is written also in a very readable format. And if you read this, at least you will have an idea. Those who do not come from the security background, those who come, I think there is nothing new. So you will notice that uh, this is, I mean, these are common set of problems. They are everywhere, but how the same problem either can make situation worse or actually it's not a big deal in cloud netting environment. So I think just go through this uh, 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 so that you have fair idea what exactly we are dealing with. So, I mean, there are a bunch of other, uh, what we call uh, resources. So if you go to resources here uh, in this list, in our uh, document list here itself, if you go to the OWASP page here, this one, and you will notice that uh, there are a bunch of resources, uh, uh, I mean, close to 50 actually. You can read uh, selectively. Uh, I would say I'm not the LLM expert because we use the model. I am not the, I mean, I'm used to cryptography and the this kind of modeling. But if you ask me the mathematics behind uh, uh, what we call um, uh, a certain model or a mathematics behind some kind of cryptography, I mean, other than the basic concept. So mathematics part, I wouldn't know. But how it is being used, how it interacts with the world, how, how the layering works, and what problem it could have potentially when you are using a certain type of cipher, certain type of key exchange, certain type of negotiation, or even if you are doing this, how do you manage the keys? How do you store such data? And the vulnerabilities which we keep on coming CVEs, uh, how some of those might impact. So that that I would, I mean, that's my expertise because I do it on almost daily basis. But many of you here who will notice that you have expertise, for example, Mehrin is working on LLM model, model and uh, Nemisa and others have Kubernetes cluster uh, exposure and so on. So I'm sure you have 
exposure to the attachment point, you need not to understand the security part, but the attachment point, if you know, you can actually figure out at some point of time if you are exposed to uh, what security we are talking about, okay? So I think just a uh, basic thing. So I uh, uh, was going through this small, what we call template document and I was saying how to begin. So I would say this, so I, I'm going to cut paste what I was thinking, I was taking a separate note, this one. So the first thing is that uh, even though our document, I mean, template document mentions that what all we should be thinking about. So there are two ways to think about uh, how to proceed. One is that uh, uh, think in terms of basic security problems, the questions which are actually mentioned here, if, if I have to go up here, so questions are mentioned here, right? Let's say these five basic questions, right? Actually, these look five questions, but it actually, uh, it is asking the right question in terms of covering a lot of things because even one word, if you say Kubernetes or data storage, AI workload, it actually covers a whole lot. So you can think in terms of uh, uh, what is being asked here, but if you go beneath, beneath this, then you will notice that every one of it has multiple topics. And among multiple topics, I noticed that uh, in AI paper and the AI world, I think later added this, uh, definition of personas. So often when you talk about personas, you are talking about set of people who are going to interact with your system uh, in certain ways applicable only to them. For example, if I'm administrator of a system, let's say AI system, my job that how uh, could be user management, could be platform management, and could be uh, what we call security policy enforcement, etc. cetera. Um, so, uh, so basically these things can be there, uh, uh, but uh, if you think in terms of, so, so those are the layering in terms of uses. So you can see all of those information uh, 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 being mentioned, for example, right side here, uh, uh, who, could, who could do this data engineer, uh, hardware engineer and so on. So we have to define the, that persona because that list is quite long in my opinion. So if you go here, persona, let me just see uh, here. So, so latest definition of persona, if you see, go here, a data engineers, AI, you keep on going. You will notice that, uh, I mean, the way people understand probably and the way silos exist in terms of job profile or in terms of uh, how uh, we see these things on day-to-day -day basis. So these are written uh, in that perspective. So for example, if I'm thinking about uh, uh, cloud native AI security, if someone is AI researcher, I mean, you have to just think about it, how exactly AI researcher or data scientist uh, uh, is going to see things differently when it comes to security. I think not, no different, differently, right? So uh, I do not believe that these can be directly uh, uh, applied to security case. And that is why at least I believe that we should be thinking on these lines. So I, uh, uh, I actually have captured in the temple document, so let me share over there. So in terms of personas, if you want to go by the definition of personas for the security, we need to define. So what I tried doing is that instead of role in our day-to-day day, day, -to -day life, uh, we need to think in terms of uh, uh, who is coming into contact in terms of uh, any security offering over there. So for example, if you're an end user, it's not about who is end user, it's about how end user is going to access the data or access the outcome. So for example, if you have an AI platform and this AI platform based upon a prompt uh, delivers set of pictures, for example, right? So what it delivers the picture is rather uh, less relevant here. The important part is that how exactly this end user, not knowing internals of the system, not knowing that it is deployed on a Kubernetes platform or wherever, how it is able to access. So for example, it can be a REST API, it can be a SOAP API, and when you talk about these things, suddenly uh, the encryption of the pipe and safekeeping of the key and the negotiation all come into the play. And then also there are variety of uh, issues which are already known. For example, let me take an example of GUI just to make the point that uh, uh, why this is relevant uh, in terms of thinking. So let's say you received an email today and you already had opened some, some website and your email uh, uh, says something, but beneath you have a, a hyperlink, right? You click that, your browser uses the cookie. And if you don't have any defense other than cookie, 
you you are pretty much logged in or whatever uh, api path you are uh, uh, you you invoked that op is going to happen that is a very simple uh, conduit to uh, uh, do an attack what called csrf cross site request forgery and cross site request forgery is that someone from another domain another application was able to use your authenticated data to actually do some op in the back end so there are many things like cross site scripting cross site request forgery uh, uh, cookie poisoning cookie uh, uh, what we call misuse e gazillion so that is the oasp type so if you think about end user i'm not thinking the type of human i'm talking about how this is being accessed and what result it is delivering so result when it comes to for example if it's a simple web page if your web page allows let's say inline calculation or uh, uh, javascript then javascript should be able to invoke uh, any domain if you allow that so all browsers for example have something called content security policy you go to the browser uh, uh, developer mode you should be able to see it uh, so if you go by the content security policy, each policy has uh, is solving uh, one particular security problem. The way certain things are being accessed by this end user, same applies to API, same apply, applies to basically JSON payload, raw payload, et cetera, et cetera. So you have to think in uh, those lines. And the result which is coming, for example, it could be a music, it could be a picture, it could be a decision, it could be a graph or whatever. Even those can be poisoned, and the next time it can be uh, used against you in terms of data. So you have to think on those lines. Similarly, instead of thinking in terms of engineer type or the human type, you have to think in all of these pipe, uh, basically, what, what could go wrong. If I take a simple example of uh, another one, for example, uh, this legal framework, even though we are not doing anything legal, but why it is important? Because... Uh, let's say you have a point of sale terminal and today these terminals are supposed to uh, uh, protect uh, and follow a standard PCI, your data basically, when you are tapping your card or uh, your phone basically. But on a very broad, simple term, AI might expose what is called PII, personally identifiable information in some way. Whether you are configuring the system, whether the output is coming back in transport, storage. So, it's a very general concept in uh, uh, security nowadays that when you are dealing with security end to end, uh, you have to protect uh, basically personally identifiable information. So for example, if you are using a data, if you are using the workload, just like many uh, vendor, big vendor like Google, et cetera do, is that you should be able to use that data, but without pinning it to a certain individual, human. Basically, you should not be able to directly correlate to a human by knowing some information. So this PII or PCI kind of security would become increasingly relevant. We don't have to mention the legal framework, but we have to mention the data type, how we are going to uh, actually uh, handle in AI environment. So I'm just giving you two example, uh, a simple example like PII and the a little more complex example of end user and associated security issues. Um, so, uh, so it is important that let's think about personas and uh, if some you some of you have better idea, either you go to this document and try to write uh, your uh, take, or at least think in terms of our discussion. Either we can actually discuss through. Uh, so basically, does it make any idea that uh, uh, we need to create uh, some kind of uh, email separate email group? Do Do you guys think? I think that would be good, but uh, yeah, I mean that's a good idea. I mean, the uh, before, is go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, I was just saying that you are saying uh, I, it, it may be a very lame question, but uh, so you are saying that in, in terms of persona instead of the users like AI engineer, data scientist, and all, mm -hmm. uh, we should be thinking on the lines of an end user, deployers, app developers, right? So, uh, why aren't we thinking on the line how the deployment process or like how the pipeline of the O? whole AI is basically from you, you building it, you build the, you're training, you are deploying it, then the end user. And within the end user, then there are different personas comes in. Basically, you have different phases of life of mm -hmm. AI, basically life cycle. And within that, you have a different persona. So, for example, if I take a security perspective, so one of the uh, thread I read about the security issue is people mm -hmm. can basically decode the prompt and they can basically uh, 
uh, even if you have prompted the LLM to basically respond in a way that you should, it should be, but they can uh, somehow uh, find a backdoor, a loophole by mm-hmm. prompting in a way that in a hypothetical scenarios, right? Now that's also a, a security issue, but it comes in a very end stage where the end users are basically using it, right? And that's there our legal framework and our security compliance and policies and other auditing or other things comes in, right? But yes. I see I see as a layer and then in within a one layer, there are different personas in it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So I think, uh, okay. So I would say this. So all of us actually see things a little differently depending upon uh, what exposure we have and depending upon what work we do. So that's a great idea that uh, we have to think of on, let's say, and, and different perspective. So I would say that, uh, Sudansu, you can capture your take in this document uh, uh, now or later, uh, mm-hmm. just some point, uh, and create, uh, uh, I mean, either you can update over there itself, or you can just say review your name and so on, so that we can actually discuss, right? And okay, I'm, I would sure. try to create an email group uh, uh, just uh, for some basic com- uh, conversation, because if you're talking about a technical stuff, I don't think, uh, unless we have a separate channel, on Slack, uh, it makes sense to talk about a certain nuance of workload and so on. So I'll try to do. So do one thing. Uh, 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 well, I today audience, I should be able to cover. Uh, but uh, uh, anyone who actually wants to be part of that group, uh, uh, they need to go to the this issue basically one seventy seven, and you should be able to write your uh, uh, you know express your interest here, and then automatically you will be going to the email group. That is one. Yeah. So I think coming back. Before I go further, John. Uh, yeah, can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so apologies, I, I joined a little bit late here. Um, but just as a quick introduction, uh, yeah, my name is John Ziola, and I have contributed to a number of CNCF white papers, including the tax security and SIG security policy working group papers. Um, and in some of those papers, we've, uh, like the, the deliverable was sometimes uh, closer to a reference architecture, where what we're describing is uh, this is this is a good way to set things up in order to be secure or have like uh, zero trust or security by default and things like that. Uh, mm-hmm. I was wondering if that is the goal of this white paper or if there's uh, a different approach. Because what I've heard so far, we've talked a lot about the problems, like kind of enumerating the potential weaknesses and properties of a system and, and ways to think about securing it. But I wonder, is yeah. that what we're looking to describe in the paper, or are we looking to address those problems by providing a reference architecture in the paper? So I don't think reference ar- architecture has been discussed or actually uh, uh, thought that way. What this paper tries to do is that uh, you can take a reference architecture if you like to, but then you have to make sure that you just figure out that that reference architecture cover most of the problems. If not all, you will see particularly in AI security environment, I mean, AI environment uh, security issues. And then it is supposed to advise about the solutions as well. So if you see this document here, so uh, for example, these are the basic questions. So these are the questions not tied to a certain uh, 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 architecture reference, but without going through a certain uh, architecture, it will be difficult to even think or make progress. So that eventually will happen, but I don't know, is it a, a reference architecture or actually architectures that we have to think. And then later, we intend to actually provide the uh, solution. So use cases, surely you, uh, might be tied to the reference architecture, but the solution space means we intend to provide what we, what how can we solve that problem uh, uh, and what framework we have or what, what else we need. So that's where. Okay, so something closer to like assessment guidance where you have an environment, here's how you procedurally look at this environment to see if it meets these properties that you'd like it to have. And in the scenarios where you find problems, here's some recommended like remediation steps or- It's pretty much, I, w- I would say pretty much that's the goal. Okay, that makes sense, thanks. Yep. Okay, so yeah, uh, so I would say that uh, uh, Today, I think I have a bunch of other uh, things uh, and I have to refine and I'll be uh, adding to these topics with my questions, about 30, 35 questions. But I would say this, so go uh, here in the document today. In the bottom, uh, you actually m- mention what you think. Uh, 
about one particular topic or any topic you would like to. But if to begin with, we want to solve, just to make progress, we want to solve basically uh, uh, two things. One that, what sort of problems you see potentially for AI in the cloud knitting environment. So that listing of problem itself is a, a goal in the sense that, uh, uh, and then we will be able to make progress and then be able to see how that problem come into the play and how we can solve later. So that is the list of problems. Uh, uh, and I'm going to list, and it's not listed here, but mine one uh, uh, later. And the second thing is that's just to make progress, we have to solve this uh, persona uh, thing. Why? Because when you are writing this white paper, and if you have this already existing framework of that, how this applies to persona, et cetera. And like I said that, uh, if you talk in terms of what applies to a data scientist or AI researcher, to me, it doesn't make sense when we're talking about AI security, who is, uh, you know, a AI scientist or data researcher, basically. So I would say that personas, uh, uh, the wordings are less relevant. What is important is that uh, these are going to help that what exactly you see over there so that you don't miss anything. So so try to, try to actually think about that. And then uh, eventually, uh, there is another way to think uh, uh, what problem we have. So like John actually raised a very good point that we, if you're talking about a reference architecture or not. So for example, you do have a reference architecture. I think I'm just thinking that uh, 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 probably we need to put one as a use case, one or two. I'll try, I'll try to put in this document. So the point is that if you take a reference architecture, for example, and if you really want to uh, figure out the problem, security problems, one way of going, those who actually have worked on security, probably this is uh, the easy way, is that you try to think in terms of threat model. So if you are not an AI expert, if you are not a security expert, you don't have to be. But if you go the way threat modeling work, what threat modeling does is that it forces you to consider an architecture, particularly what architecture you have, and then go all security endpoint surface what problem it is throwing. So basically a threat model is the delineation of attachment point, interfaces, uh, connection, and the type of connection, type of uh, uh, interfaces and attachment you have, whether it is user, whether it is application, whether it is platform, uh, whatever. So if you think you don't have to, because we are not going to work on threat model itself, but if you have a psychology of thinking in terms of a simple AI system that a web server is running an AI workload based upon a, a, a prompt. It it actually uh, interact with the data, uh, big data. Uh, I mean, which which was fed to learn it, and it also keep on learning, continuous learning, or it could be a retrieval uh, augmented uh, model. So if you think about that, and then uh, a simple user has a web server model and try to access that, then you have to create a threat model basically. So in that threat model, you will notice that. Uh, you will automatically think in terms of what kind of user I am, whether I'm going to manage this system or I'm just the user to see uh, what's the final output. How am I talking to the server? Whether I'm able to, uh, uh, what we call, impact uh, the backend in a way that it actually impacts the result, or if I'm able to do something in a way that the result, uh, I mean, there is a problem for other users, for example, denial of service and so on and CPU uses are giving one prompt which require processing a lot of data, or for example, uh, you know already some kind of vulnerabilities, and then you can uh, exploit those in AI environment even more because of the uh, uh, what high demand of CPU storage, et cetera. So, if it, so think about the threat modeling. And uh, I actually don't work on, take the dread model. I don't know uh, if any of you have done it, but a stride model used to be very common and actually it is very common way of thinking. So if you think about that, it automatically gives you a uh, idea what can go wrong and what are we solving. And as soon as you go and try uh, researching a stride model, you will notice that every topic which is mentioned here has a variety of subtopics and then subtopic have their cases and uh, probably you'll be able to figure out that what applies to cloud netting environment at that uh, level. So I would say that uh, these two way we can make progress, we can actually state the problem. So the end goal here of these two, which I'm explaining is just to find out what problem uh, we have, the li laundry list of problems, which we will see in a cloud native AI environment. 
So, uh, yeah, so I think, uh, uh, no, let me know uh, what you think, if you have any other uh, way to actually list out the problem. So uh, I'm trying to figure out if we are able to list out the problem, then we will make progress. Uh, what can, uh, how can we actually solve and uh, uh, how it applies to a architecture or a bunch of architecture, then we can go how the modeling works, etc. Go ahead. Yeah, so I just wanted to mention I added a link in there to the open and secure model. Uh, it's a white paper that came out of Tag Security, mm -hmm. and it describes how we perform the assessments of CNCF projects. Um, so, you know, as a part of Tag Security, we do security assessments of graduated projects and projects that request it. Uh, and the model uh, was uh, described in that white paper. It also talks through Dread, Stride, and some alternatives like rapid risk assessments and Go SDL and um, lots of different things. So that might be a, a, a place if we're thinking about threat modeling or risk assessments or things like that to, uh, that's already in the CNCF ecosystem. Yeah, I think that will be helpful. Thank you. Thank you, John, for joining. Actually, uh, uh, I could not attend last Wednesday meeting tech security, so I was not able to put that we have this meeting. And uh, I did post it on the Slack, but I noticed that I just posted on the AI work group. Um, so yeah, I think I, I also attend tech security. So I think I'm going to take this you know, information so that uh, people from tech security are actually, even if they are not directly involved, I mean, the, if you guys want to, sure. Uh, but if even if you're not involved, I we would prefer you to be there or to see or to, uh, you know, uh, I mean, nudge us in a direction that we are not <laughs> debating from the, uh, basically the modeling, uh, sorry, the uh, security basically paper which we are trying to deliver is on the right path. Eventually, this paper need to be blessed by the tech security as well. Uh, and I think in the upcoming uh, Wednesday meeting or something, I'm going to uh, put one more time and going to ask about the people who could join. Uh, so yeah, thank you for joining. Absolutely, looking forward to it. I, that's where I saw this uh, message as well was in the Slack uh, channel, so. Yeah, so I think I had put a poll over there and we in the poll we found that uh, uh, this time works for everyone because uh, second and fourth Friday of uh, uh, 8 a.m. basically PT time, we have this AI work group meeting run by the tag runtime folks. And then this meeting is going to be interlaced in between uh, Fridays. Yeah, so I think folks, I think I spoke a lot. So I would say that, okay, uh, uh, let's discuss about what you think about how we can make progress and what all, what problem we need to solve first, just from this paper perspective. Yeah, sounds good, Dave. Yeah, sounds good. I, I think your points made a lot of sense and made a good outline. Um, personally, I'll probably uh, go and read up a little bit on the white papers you mentioned and take a look at these points and see, uh, you know, start thinking about it. And then maybe we can uh, start next week or next next week. Right. So I think uh, as of now, mention all of your finding questions and uh, uh, if you have something to say, something to capture in this document itself. Uh, so basically this document, uh, we are going to make it eventually uh, our uh, working document. Uh, I have to think about uh, how this meeting goes into calendar and if we need to capture meeting minutes separately because uh, this meeting is getting recorded. So it would be a great idea that the minutes are also available, what we discussed. Yeah, I think persona. Yeah, so I think this, let me see, just click here. Uh, John just posted persona here. Yeah, this is a document from 2019, but there's some personas described here specific to security rules and responsibilities. And I just generally like to stay aligned across the different working groups and uh, in the CNCF. Um, so we're not reinventing the wheel and things like that as well. We could just make like one more authoritative source than multiple different conflicting sources. Yeah, yeah, this is actually, I come from security background. So this, what you have mentioned here is actually uh, making more sense to me. So we have to actually use this kind of persona. And if you are defining persona, I would say if we need to add certain uh, type uh, more, probably fine. But this is what actually I meant when I was trying to list uh, some of those personas type from our just research perspective. So that makes sense. So yeah, uh, thank you uh, for the link. So go ahead, folks, and see what actually these personas are actually doing. This is, appears that uh, it's a good thing. Yeah, I have not seen this one. Good idea. Go ahead, Nisa. You, you were saying something more? 
Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, I didn't say anything. Okay. Okay. Good. So, uh, how uh, how how do you think the uh, uh, we make make better progress actually? Any any more idea we can make uh, basically a better use of our time of this meeting or what happened in between? Okay, so I would say uh, uh, I would say that there is no point uh, of talking uh, further. I mean, go through this. Some of I'm I'm going to actually. So I have another document which I uh, uh, captured whole lot. So I'm going to just paste uh, my finding in a little bit more readable format. What and I am also going to capture uh, some of this uh, discussion we had and the suggestion John and everybody uh, made, so that uh, we have a coherent uh, what we call way of uh, making progress, and. Uh, of course, feel free to go put your uh, take, your finding. And if you particularly want to say that I really uh, proceeding on this one, I want to make uh, progress, go ahead. And uh, if you guys want to form, let's say two people are working on the same thing, it helps for you, go ahead. So yeah, so I mean, if we make every two weeks in the meeting, the meeting is not for making progress in terms of on the ground. So progress on the ground has to happen in the middle. So there is a need for conversation. Actually, we can create that uh, uh, grouping I'm talking about, or maybe a separate Slack channel, but I'll think about it if that is doable. Uh, um, so yeah, so progress we will make in between. We are going to talk about the progress itself and some discussion in the meeting. Sounds like a good idea? Yeah, um, just a couple of quick things. Uh, all the way at the end of the document, I saw you put reference architecture. So I added a link to another reference architecture that all the way at the bottom uh, of this document. All the way, all the way. All the way. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that is just kind of what made me think of reference architecture was that we, um, not I wasn't involved with this one, but it was done in tag security for the supply chain security. They, yeah. they did a paper, which was reference architecture, and then they actually implemented it. But when they implemented it, they did it under the OpenSSF instead of uh, CNCF. But Conceptually, this is a reference architecture. And so just like being intentional about we are not doing this or we are doing this, um, I just wanted to put that link out there. And then uh, the other thing was um, I've been involved with maybe seven or eight different white papers in the CNCF. I know a lot of times towards the middle, we have yeah. issues knowing when we're done, right? Um, like, And so I would highly recommend upfront like what is the success criteria, acceptance criteria? Like we know we're done when um, with this white paper because they can easily just get longer and longer. And my opinion, which people don't always agree with, is that uh, if the paper gets too long, like north of 30 or 40 pages, it doesn't become consumable anymore. And so I prefer more small papers. You all can obviously welcome to disagree with that. But um, so like setting just general bounds about how long is the thing we're making and what, how do we know that it's done? Um, I think from, from my perspective, makes it much more likely that we can, um, consider something finished. Cause I've also worked on a few white papers that never finished, right. They kind of got longer and longer and then died. Um, and so I'm, I just want to kind of prevent that a little bit, but, uh, I am really excited to contribute to this because on top of security, I've been working for the last uh, year and a half in the AI space, um, kind of using AI to do security. Um, so I'm also interested in using AI securely, which is, I think more of the topic of this paper. That's right. And actually, well, so first of all, uh, thank you for the link. I think this paper just completed about a few months ago, right? I noticed. Is it? The no. Supply... So what happened was the repository got reorganized. So the timestamps aren't good. I see. Um, if you go uh, up a level and then go to the PDF version of this, PDF uh, there's a, uh, I think a timestamp of when this was delivered, but this was years ago. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So this is, yes, I think it appears that, so the so two point here, yeah, we have to literally have a uh, deliverable definition just to make sure that we are on the point and we have a closer at some point. That is one. And secondly, yes, I do agree that it has to be, you know, uh, readable and uh, not like a big novel. I mean, yeah. So 50 pages are less. I think how many, uh, yeah, I would say less than 50 pages uh, if we can actually do that job. Yeah, both agree, agree both on uh, both point basically. But yeah, I think uh, uh, some of these uh, uh, white paper document could be useful framework. So go ahead, folks. I think uh, uh, this link is there in the template document John actually mentioned here. So yeah, so uh, yeah, so this is going to be helpful. And uh, 
good good so yeah i think that's a uh, yep yep so anything anybody else i think yeah so i think we we have to have a definition of deliverable and uh, uh, what we call uh closing the issues and the having this fair idea of what we are going to deli deliver and when we are going to say that it is done but i think more would also depend upon when we rope in uh, uh, folks from both uh, basically tag runtime and tag security at some point of time once once both uh, side agree with the scope basically uh, scope of and deliverable basically then we can make progress from the final goal and uh, perspective basically so yeah so uh, okay so let me know what else you have to say so otherwise i would say that okay we have enough material let's read particularly uh, some of these uh, uh, what we call ai white papers sorry white papers basically in general just to have a fair idea uh, how it i mean what all uh, 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 is done before and what all we should be doing and we have to focus and like i said we have a a small focus not the general security we have AI security, and it could be incremental. And then we have AI security in the cloud native environment. So basically, we are not talking about the uh, LLM algorithm itself, but we are talking about how it consumes the data, what in, what problem it brings in the platform itself, or the decision-making data, poisoning, et cetera, et cetera. So let's do uh, uh, our job. Like I said, uh, our progress is going to happen in the mid, um, in between meeting as opposed to meeting itself. But we will discuss meeting for our uh, uh, progress accounting as well as some discussion. So let me know if you have any idea. Otherwise, uh, we should be done today. Well, cool. Thank you. Thank you, Dip. Uh, I think I will go through the links and the white papers that are mentioned, and then probably then we'll say something there. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for everyone joining the first meeting. And I think uh, it will be a regular affair now, and we'll I ho hopefully we will make progress. Next time we'll discuss a, uh, a bit more about our finding and uh, discuss. So we will start settling stuff. Uh, what we see, what we think. Thank you again. Enjoy your Thank day. You. Yep. Thank you.